Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. My name is Denise Mika Hutchins and I'm broadcasting to you from Studio Mika Arts. Our charity of the month is Tower Hill Stables Animal Sanctuary. We've already met our fundraiser goal here on Twitch, but we can always exceed it. So if possible, please make a donation. Also, just come watch my stream and bring your friends because I'll be making a donation at the end of this month based on my unique viewers count. Today and tomorrow are the last days to help bump that number up. It's, uh, I was gonna say Wednesday, it's Thursday, which means it's time for more illustration work. Hooray! Let's make more progress on this lovely Summer Griffin scene. We made excellent progress yesterday. I am really excited to push this even further, adding that background color coming to this with fresh eyes today. You just made such a huge and positive impact on the overall scene. And then of course, adding black in lots of different areas creates so much more depth and interest. It was looking really flat and washed out before, but now, even though I have not changed that many of the colors, helps the other colors stand out and have a place instead of everybody uh, jostling for that same range. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. It makes sense in my head. So today, I'm not actually sure where I want to start. So I guess I'll start with just introducing what I'm working with. I've got my nice, clean, fresh bowl of water here. I've got my brushes, a towel for them to sit on so that they don't get my desk all wet. But I also have a nice paper towel for wiping the brushes, controlling the amount of water, and dabbing away anything I want on the painting itself. Of course, I have my lovely big palette of colors. Lift up my camera so you can see that. Oh, it's hard to get it even there. Oh, oh. Uh, anyway, you can see all the beautiful colors. Well, this is what I have to work with. And yeah, that's it. I mean, this is my second day using my new live stream setup. So that's pretty exciting. So yesterday was the first day using it. The day before that was the main uh, design work. Uh, yesterday I did a whole bunch more work for the physical arrangement of all my equipment and stuff. I guess I'll introduce it again in case anybody uh, hasn't seen yesterday's recording or wasn't here yesterday. I've got now my new main camera is a Logitech Reach and I've got a little space here for a slideshow of my chibi art going back to 2020 or 2021, I can't remember. This is also the area where Twitch alerts will pop up and if I'm using a reference image that I don't mind sharing, basically I have the copyright or it's public domain, then I'll have a reference image here instead of the slideshow. Down here is the chat box like usual, just resized. This is my secondary camera, used to be my primary camera and so you can see now my tools are visible, hooray! And then we've got the tertiary camera here. It's doing the same job it has been. It's the previous secondary. Now move down to tertiary, but now we've got the trio of cameras working together. So I know this is the, this is this interesting side angle of my painting. And then of course we've got info at the top links at the bottom if you'd like to, if I can do my hand, links at the bottom if you'd like to support my work. Okay. What do I want to start with? I, I'm kind of feeling the blues are a little flat compared to everything else. Now I did of course add a lot to this one. There's this gray I was seeing on the bird reference image that I'm working from. But it overall the shading, so I've added different colors, but there's not too much with shading. I added a little bit yesterday here, but I feel like we can take it further. And also, 
make it a bit richer. I mean, it's already, I mean, look at this, this one right here. This looks so vibrant and lovely. These ones, of course, they are meant to be a little more dull because they are in between this brown or the blue. But I still think as far as shading goes, we could get more rich too. So darker and more rich with the color. So I will start with taking my darkest, richest blue. Actually, well, should I? I'm using my size four round brush, just waking it up with that. And I'm wondering if I should just go ahead and get my big wash brush out to get a whole bunch of color, but this might be enough because there's not actually that many places where I'll be putting color. We're getting into this really fun, fun part of any illustration where you're just working on the details and fine tuning and adding a little touch here and there and it's super fun. So I'm just going to see using this color straight from the palette what this is like. Man, I need to, uh, I can't do it yet because I just put color on the page. I need to lower my lamps because the camera is so low right now that it is casting a shadow because the lamps are shining on it. Let me put my blue towel in here. So I discovered yesterday, I love having this fabric towel for the brushes to just sit on. Because if I use a paper towel for them to just sit on and they're wet, this kind of goes through to the my desk surface but this towel is actually not that great for swiping off liquid from the brush in order to control how much I'm putting down it doesn't absorb that much so so I, I need this paper towel to be over here too boop like that yes look at that instant makes an instant difference Wait, oh, let me make sure I'm actually showing this. So much more dimension there. Especially since yesterday I added this shading to this wing here, and so adding that dark underneath the wing reinforces that idea. This wing is sitting on top. But, like I said, let's try and make my lamps even lower. <laughs> They're already pretty low. I normally have them above my head. But this is why I have these really nice, big, long, flexible gooseneck lamps so that I can do something like this. There. Wow, makes it super bright too, having it this close. This is, oh, I turned it off. Wow. Okay, just trying to make sure they're not in the way of the camera because the camera I can move up and down and do all this great stuff, this new, new primary camera. Okay, that's way better because now the only shadow that I'm seeing is from my hands. Okay. Yeah, I'm having to relearn how to stream using my new equipment. Adding the one camera because it's so much more flexible in the ways it can move. It's more dynamic than this, this, this camera or this camera. These ones... This little one is actually more flexible than this medium one, called the medium one, the secondary camera. But this, this new primary camera blows them both out of the water. <laughs> it's really good. Okay. Okay, so let's keep going like that. I love it when I can use a color straight out of the well. I don't like to only paint with straight out of the well. I love to mix because I think that makes my colors really unique. But it's nice when you can just get on with it without spending a bunch of time on on mixing. Uh, plus, sometimes there's the downside of mixing, which is you might not mix enough color. And I, long-time viewers will know this, <laughs> that I like, oh, shoot. I didn't mix enough, now I have to try to match it, and I don't remember exactly what I did, or the base was a color I mixed previously, and so I really don't remember what I did because I mixed that original color that I started with 
months or even years ago because I hate wasting stuff. So watercolor is ideal in that you have a color you mixed on your palette, you can just leave it. You can leave it for years and years and years and all you have to do is add a little water and it'll come right back to life. So there's some good, good and bad things about watercolor my one of my favorite media. Medium. Mediums? Media? Mediums? Both words are in use, so sometimes it's hard to decide. <laughs> should I say media or should I say mediums? Well, I've used both words in this talk, so. Either way, I think y'all know what I mean. Okay. That's pretty good. I just wonder, maybe add a little bit more up top. So light is coming sort of from behind this. As if the sun is in the sky over this way. So there won't be too much hitting this griffin, but I want to give a sense of roundness too. So I think leaving a little light spot in the middle, that helps make it a little more round. And I'll definitely need to take some of these blues even darker, but we're just going to start with this. Well, this griffin in the background. What I was saying yesterday, I'm still thinking that I want to follow this idea that I had, which is that this griffin is so far in the background that we're actually not going to see that much dark. It's on purpose going to look fairly flat. It's because it's that far away from the viewer. But I do want it to still have dimension. So we're just going to add a tiny bit. Try not to overdo it. Also, it's not just about dimension, it's about making it look just as worked as everything else in this scene. We don't want this to look like I just forgot about it. <laughs> don't want to look like, hmm, the artist must have forgotten about this little griffin here. I guess it was too small. No, <laughs> this one needs to look just as worked just as much attention. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so we have this and this griffin. I'm gonna add a little bit more too. Although to be honest, let me show you, I've still got this lovely, oops, hit that on the small camera, lovely texture here. I don't know if the camera can, this new camera can zoom in that close focus in that close. Well, anyway, I think you can see this sort of dappling effect right here. So I don't want to override that. I don't want to obscure it, but I do think we need a little bit more shading here. So I'm going to just try to let's see what I can do. Be a really light touch. I'm gonna try to be. Light handed. Okay, I'm spreading this out with water. And then I'm gonna use the towel to soften the edges. Since I didn't do wet on wet, I did wet on dry. I don't want it to dry with too hard of an edge. Though I do have a lovely hard edge here, so it's not like I'm completely against it, but I would like it to be softer. And I think this is going to be good. It even looks like it might dry with more of that dappling effect. We'll see in a second. So let's move on over to this one. I've got my reference image up. Though I wonder if there's a 
different. I think this is the reference I used. It's at a completely different angle. It's more, it's looking at the viewer, this bird. So it's kind of hard to tell where I should put shadows, but if I use my imagination, knowing that the light is coming from in front of this griffin, and over here, and coming this way, I think I can imagine where we'll see more shadows. So let's see what I can do. I think I'm gonna actually do. Uh, I'll do a mixture of <laughs> wet, wet on wet, and wet on dry because I'll keep spreading the paint up with wet, and then if it's not enough, then I'll add more paint. Wet on wet means you get the paper wet first with water, and then you add the wet pigment into that, the wet watercolor into that. Wet on dry means the page is dry, and the watercolor is wet, and you paint it on there. And it's a completely different result because if it's wet on wet, the paint can flow and create some organic shapes that look, I mean, I guess it creates organic shapes either way, but it's, it's got a completely different effect. <laughs> it moves much farther and much more freely when it's wet on wet. But you can sort of imitate it when you are doing wet on dry if you add a bunch of water. I'm trying to be careful here because watercolor can be reactivated on the page itself even after it's dry, which is exactly what's happening. So this black is getting reactivated. I'm trying my best to not let it flow too much. So I'm trying not to mess with it too much. I just apply the blue and get out of there. <laughs> That's the one problem with what I did yesterday, which was get some really dark color in there so that I can have a better idea of where I need to add more in the middle, more mid mid-tone color. So I don't regret it because I definitely found that useful. It was informative and guided me well, but now I've got to be careful for areas like this. I might have to redo, probably will, redo some of these spots, especially this gray area on the back. But, like I said, it was worth it because yesterday just like today, I'm getting to the point where it's hard to tell, like, what should I do next? It still doesn't feel quite finished. feels like there's still stuff that needs to be addressed, but it's hard to tell what. So if the paper is the top end, because the paper's white, so that's the lightest stuff, then I needed a darkest thing in order to guide me. I'm going to take my towel again, make sure it's on a relatively clean spot, and dab away to create a softer line here, and a fresh spot, create a softer line here. I've learned the hard way that you've really got to pay attention to what part of the towel you're using, and when you're dabbing away, that you keep moving to a fresh part, fresh part, fresh part. Otherwise, you end up with little dab marks because it absorbs so much paint that it actually starts putting the paint down instead of picking it up. Now I'm just working this, trying to get a little bit more roundness. So 
So it's looking kind of flat, stuff I've done so far. Makes this griffin's head look flat. I think that'll be good. I'll leave that like that. So let's add a little bit more blue to this griffin. I added that little bit there and then I was so happy that I moved over here moved over there, and then I realized there was more areas I could add to. So let's do that. So the next thing I'm definitely going to work on is brown that's also part of this Griffin's patterning. It's blue and brown mixed together in the feathers. And I'm still just using the color straight from the well. Not sure how well you can see what I'm doing. Wait, I'm working over here. That with the small camera you can't see too well, but <laughs> at least the big camera is here. I haven't mentioned it in a while, but these griffins are comprised of a lazuli bunting and an American water vole. I picked them because they live in the same general area in the world, and they both are, at least they've been recorded as both eating sunflower seeds. So I figured that a griffin, I always like to make my Griffin's naturalistic in that way. I mean, I also obviously like to make them appearance-wise naturalistic, but this, uh, their eating habits, the places they live in the world, also inform well, who I choose to become Griffins in a certain scene. That's probably good for that one. wonder if I should add a little more. Right, right, I wanted to work on the brown next. So let's do the same thing, but for the brown colors. Even though I didn't want to work on this griffin anymore because I love this dappled pattern. Uh, the, It's angle seems like it should be a lot darker overall. Because it's straight like this and the light is coming from behind. This part, the bottom part of its face is actually lighter on purpose, not from lighting, but from pigment, the pigment of its feathers, or at least how they appear to the human eye. Because bird feathers are interesting. When they're blue, it's not actually blue pigment. It's blue because of the way the feathers refract the light and the way human eyes interpret that refraction. Anyway, <laughs> this griffin, though, is sort of standing out because it doesn't seem to match the lighting of the rest of the scene. So even though I really don't want to lose this pattern, I think I'm going to make it a little darker. This one, I really like how it looks already. I might add a little bit more like right here, but I love this little transition from the lightest part where the sun's hitting here, but then it's like, ah, really dark. I'm not really having enough shadow over here though, so. And then of course the browns on these fellows need a little bit more work too. So I think this, is the color that I was using, or maybe this one? No, this was what I was using in the middle of the sunflowers, but 
Uh, but then it, we don't want it to be the same color as the sunflowers. Then again, the brown ones are supposed to be, in nature, animals that are brown are usually because that matches their environment. So maybe actually it would be good to use this same brown. And it's already a nice big blob of it mixed here. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. See what happens. I am going to use my one inch wash brush though. Look at it. I cleaned it yesterday. Haha, <laughs> I actually cleaned it properly. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's about to get dirty. I love this wash brush. I have started recently using it all the time because I realized I don't just like to use it to do an actual wash on my painting. It's so nice because it holds so much water that it's really easy to wake up my paint. And I've been painting so long, you think I would have realized that before now, but <laughs> it's only this year that I really thought, hey, why don't I just keep this out for more than just painting purposes. It can be used as a, it has multiple uses as a painting tool. It's a watercolor tool. Okay, scoop a little bit more water. So I'm just waking up the color by applying a bunch of water and then rubbing the bristles over the dry watercolor. Okay. So now I am tapping the brush onto the palette to try to get as much pigment to come out of the bristles so that I don't just rinse it away in the water. Of course, you can never really get it all. And eventually there will be a balance point where it starts sucking up more than it's putting down. So let's just say that's good. And if you want to watch something interesting, look at my secondary camera. We're going to about to have some nice swirls in the water. Ooh. I wonder if the camera is too small for you to even see. I love that. I love those. And then a more pigment drops out and makes more little swirls in the water. All right, I'm gonna stop messing around with the swirls and actually just try to rinse this. Okay. So I'll just set this on my towel. So this is the kind of thing why I like to have this fabric towel here because this brush is still full of water even though I wiped it off on the edge of the bowl. But I can just set it here and I don't have to get this towel super soaking wet. Oops, I'm not sure which camera I'm under. I'm like holding it in between two. I don't have to get this towel super soaking wet because I like it to be as dry as possible so that I can use it for pulling up paint if I need to. Okay, so I'm getting my size four round brush again and get some of this dark brown paint, which I believe was what I used to make the centers of the sunflower super dark. At least one of the colors. I, f I feel like actually I might just put some straight, my darkest brown paint on top too, but anyway. Let's start over here. So I'm left handed and there's so much to do. We'll start over here and that way I can work this way and not work on wet stuff. If I have to work on wet stuff, then I have to be super careful not to put my hand in it. And very often I'm not careful enough, so. Okay, got that color on there. Now I'm gonna just take a damp brush and soften it up. I'm gonna reinforce that nice shadow that I was liking before. And here I'm gonna add a little extra to reinforce the shape of the wing. And how this darker brown transitions on the back and becomes a lighter brown. And 
Now I'm gonna see if I can. Oops. I have to remember to move that little camera. I'm going to try to pull away along the edge to get a reflected light effect. Because I sort of had that before, so I'd like to retain it. I think I did achieve that. Even looks like it's glowing. I don't know if you can see that really well. Let's see if the little camera can get really close on there. Show you that. Oh, it's really struggling with the white balance though, also casting a huge shadow, but you can see that bit of lighter paper. Okay, get this camera back. <laughs> Alright, moving on. So for this darker brown, I'm just focusing on the griffins. And then we can work more on the sunflowers later if it seems like it needs it. So up here, this brown that's mixed in with the blue, let's add some more there. Oh, this seems a little bit too wet. little bit too wet. So I need this to make relatively thin marks for these hair-like strokes I'm trying to get in here. This is also a time where I'm gonna try to catch any spots on the paper that have sort of been missed all this time and they're just like little white specks showing through. And I like to start, if I remember, with the areas that I want to be darkest. And then as the paint runs out on my brush, I move to lighter and lighter areas. And then the paint just naturally gets lighter because there's less paint on the brush. And so I can get a range of these browns without changing my brush or anything. Of course, I'll use my nice paper towel, too. So get these spots on the tail. Of course, when these are so small, they might have dried already before I'm able to get to the paper towel, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's try. Let's see if we can use a paper towel right in this middle area. I got a little bit, not much, as I thought it dried really quick. This is so small, small area, so there's not that much water to dry. But I still think we've got a bit of a round shape going on. Oh, the laundry's done. I think that's the dryer because I can hear the washer's drum spinning. So washer's still going. I when we got these washers and dryers, I was like, I want singing washers and dryer. <laughs> I didn't even know such a thing existed, and then we when we were looking at houses the same time that we were shopping and ended up getting this house. We were in someone else's house that was for sale. And they had the singing <laughs> washer went off while we were there visiting. And I was like, what? That was such a thing existed that is so cute and lovely. So when we got new washer and dryer when we moved into this house, I was like, it must be a singing one. All right. That's good enough for that one. So let's add a little bit to this fellow in the background. But as I've been saying, I'm gonna to try to keep it super light because I want some atmospheric perspective. 
I want it to look like this griffin is farther away, away and therefore you cannot see as much variance between light and dark. But I'm also tackling those little specks of paper that have managed to escape me, elude me all this time. So I'm just doing tiny little touches, I'm not adding any more pigment to my brush. Just trying to fill in those spots. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Ah, oh, I'm getting excited because this is getting closer and closer to done. Okay, next, this one. Water on the brush, paint on the brush, and this little band on the chest. Definitely, we're gonna make that much darker. That might be a little bit too much. <laughs> I've got a lot of paint on my brush. A little bit too much paint. Okay, Let's spread this out. I think I'll try, if it doesn't dry too fast, I'll try the reflected light technique on there too. get these little spots. It's actually pretty tough painting this <laughs> part with the blue mixing in because they're separate feathers but on the page it's really hard to paint them as separate feathers. <laughs> so hopefully the overall effect is... I mean they kind of look like leopard griffins so that's kind of cool. They don't look as, it's not as smooth and lovely as on the actual birds I'm basing this on, but the griffins are their own thing, so they can, they can be a little bit different. So now I'm adding this reflective light. I, I say adding, but what I'm doing is taking away, taking away the paint to get a band of reflected light, what looks like reflected light. The reason for that is not only that that's just a likely thing to happen like physically, naturally, but also it helps create separation between this dark brown of the middle of the sunflower disc and then the dark brown on the griffin. So let's do a little bit more. We have not done the back half of this one. Check and make sure my painting is on screen good. It is really nice having so much more flexibility with my cameras. But it also means I need to keep looking and making sure that I'm, like, in frame. There goes the washer. Now your laundry is done. I always try to think in my head of lyrics to that song. But I've only ever gotten the end part. It's oh, some some something think something something it's like laundry do 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 laundry do 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 laundry now your laundry is done. So I need lyrics to fit in the in between the words laundry. <laughs> That's, I always think about it, but I've never, I've never finished the song. Just the end part. Uh, it's just kind of like how I relate to lyrics in music. And so often I only remember the line at the end of each phrase or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is with that. So, you know, I don't think I'm the only one. You're like singing and then you're like, huh, I love this song, but I do not know this part. So you're like, dun, 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 dun. and then you finish the lyrics singing along. That happens to me with the laundry song too. Making up my own laundry song. Okay, I'm going to do wet on wet for this griffin. I think the wet on wet is what creates that lovely texture. 
So if I shade this using wet on wet, I hope I will continue having some nice, pretty interactions between the paint and the page. Uh, but still be able to get a darker, darker color. So I'm actually going to add even more because this one is one of the closest to the viewer. It's even closer than this one. Look how big this head is compared to this head. And that means opposite of what we have here, we're going to be seeing even more variety in shading, and more detail, more variety of hues. So I'm just dipping into my darkest brown well. Not mixing a color except for on the page here. Because I also want to keep, if I can, the sense that the pigment of the top feathers is still darker than the pigment of the bottom feathers, even if the whole griffin is in shadow here. So I'm trying to navigate both pigment and shading, but I've just got the same materials to do it with. It's the same color, so hopefully we can do that. I want to soften this edge here, show the sun is kind of curving over. So I'm going to add a little water and then take my towel, clean bit and dab. Dab along that edge and softens it up. And especially, because the light's coming from over here, especially want it to hit a little more from this side. So uh, before it made it look really flat. So hopefully by bringing this bit of highlight down, it'll look more round, this head. It's hard to see though for me because the light is hitting on the angle of my page. All right, I think that's good enough for now. Leave that. The beak needs a little more work, but I don't want to touch it until until the feathers are dry because otherwise it'll just start mixing. And that's no good. Look over here. This is so interesting how this one has dried. Well, the pigment shifted toward the middle, the middle of the griffin. So I want to add a little bit more pigment because it's too, too light. Oh, Tashamp, thank you for subscribing. You never put that message on there. Thank you, thank you. 14 months since you never put that. I didn't know it's been so long. If you want me to draw you a chibi, you can just let me know. Yay! Full disclosure, Tashump is my husband. <laughs> Anybody else watching? Thank you, husband! Yay! Why is this purple crown here? That doesn't show me. Why is this little purple crown? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. I love that little Suica guy. Oh, yeah. It does show founder. So I was going to say, as for anybody who is wondering, for all of my founding Twitch subscribers, every time they reach a one-year milestone or anniversary or whatever you want to describe that then I offer a chibi caricature in thanks okay and more add more shadow there but let's add a little bit more water to the edge I like this edge, but it's a little too hard. So let's soften it up. Some water and paper towel. And I 
don't know why Twitch doesn't tell me if someone subscribes if they don't choose to put the message up that they subscribed. I don't know why. It should tell me. It, it should at least tell me privately. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully this will dry in a way that I like. The way it dried before was interesting, but it wasn't the effect that I wanted. Spreading this, spreading this color out. It's a little bit more here too. Okay, we'll see what that does. See how that dries. <clears throat> never took any drink of my tea. I'm going to take a moment. I've got my nice cup of mug of black tea here. Oh yeah, it's pretty much lukewarm now. <laughs> I made it right before the stream and I forgot. I purposefully abstained from drinking it right away, not because it was hot, but because I had just taken a one of those anti-cold things. Can't remember what the brand name is, but it's like a high zinc thing and you let it dissolve in your mouth or you use a spray. You're not supposed to eat for like 20 or 30 minutes, eat or drink anything for 20 or 30 minutes after that. Cause two days ago I was feeling really sick. Like I was getting sick again. And then lovely husband said, take these. And I was like, oh yeah, that exists. And I think it's helped because yesterday I felt way better and today I feel even better. So whatever I was feeling a couple days ago, I think this, uh, oh, it's called Zycam. So I think it's working. Okay. What else? What else can I work on? I haven't really done that much on these back feet. They're looking pretty flat. What color are they compared to everything else on the body? I feel like they're a different color from everything else. <clears throat> I feel like they're supposed to be pink. I need to look at my waterfall reference. Oh, they're not that different. Okay. I'm going to keep this water bowl reference up. I need some of this darker brown. Let's just tackle some feet, shall we? We've got this one back here, and it's going to be pretty much all in shadow because this the body is here, and even if there was some light coming under the body, it's coming from behind, so the sunflower would still be blocking it. So this foot right here needs to be pretty dark. So let's go ahead and just Fill it in. Fill it in with this dark brown color straight from the well, not mixed. And it's still a little bit rich. It's kind of too bright. I might want to mix it. I have this grayish color, but maybe I'll add. I don't want gray because gray isn't dark enough <laughs> so I either want black or like a dark blue maybe let's just do black it's such a small area can't fit too much in it wake up some black and add a little bit of black to this foot oh and then maybe after I'm done with this foot it'll be time to go on break. There's only a couple minutes left until break time. And I think I'll probably have a snack, have a stretch. But I don't want this to be as dark as the front feet. So just adding black to the brown, not trying to make it covered black. If that makes sense. I'm also seeing a similar effect anyway on the reference image. The top part of the back foot is much, much darker compared to the sides and the toes. 
And that's pretty good. Let's just leave that one. Let's just leave that one and go on break. Put that there. Put these there. Okay. Set this up all nice. Although it'll be covered by Ranger anyway when I click. Maybe right back, but let's all go take a break. Get something to drink. Stand up, walk, stretch. Well, someone's having a dream in here going eep. I don't know who it is. Well, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to put my Be Right Back sign on. And I'll be back in five minutes.
Hello everyone, I'm back. Hope you had a great break. I ate a tasty snack, did some nice stretches for my lower back. I'm all ready to return to painting. Also, I smelled the horrible smoke outside. We, we had three glorious days of green quality air, which is very low level uh, pollu pollution. And then there's a close by fire raging and it's reached us as far as the smoke is concerned. And it is just so bad. It's when you open the door, the smoke comes in as if someone's just has a fire going right outside your door, you know, a foot in front of you. Like it's that thick of smoke. It just fills your house instantly. Oh man. So also I had that kind of depressing, <laughs> depressing experience during my break, but overall good break. <coughs> Excuse me. My cough is mostly gone. Mostly, mostly gone. Okay, so we're working on these feet, I remember now. So I like how this dried, so let's just keep doing that. Start with that dark brown and then add a little black on top. This one is the same story as the last foot that I did. It's gonna be basically completely shaded from the, the because of the sunflower, because of the griffin itself. <clears throat> and now a little black oops wait yeah that's black the black and my darkest blue are so similar when they're dry that I thought I got some of the dark blue instead of black but no I got black so I'll add the black in there I don't want to add too much it's really hard to tell in such a teeny tiny space if I'm adding too much or not Like the foot is completely disappearing into the sunflower, so I'm adding a little more black than I might have otherwise. I just I feel like that's the best way to help it stand out from the sunflower there. I think I'll let it dry for a second and then dab away and see if that lightens it up. Because ideally I would like the front feet to look more like pure black and the back feet to be this mixture of some lighter brown and, and darker brown and black areas so all right it looks like that's dried a bit so let's see what happens with it. just a little light dab yeah that's pretty good it doesn't have to be perfect it's more about ensuring that this foot doesn't get lost because I feel like when you're only seeing half of this creature it really helps to have as many elements as possible visible. Let's see if I can... Oops, this has a lot more water on it than I thought. I right, gotta use my towel. I put a ton of water down. There was one of those little white spots. Oh, but that got it. Excellent. Okay, moving on, here's the next back foot, and this is also the last back foot. There's only three of these back feet showing. Get some water on my brush, get some paint on my brush. I'm trying to not get too much water because I don't want it to spill out of the area that I'm trying to paint. If you apply too much, it will just be like, well, I'm going to go where there's room. And then it just spills out <laughs> wherever. <laughs> like, no, I didn't want you there. All right, the same thing is happening where it's disappearing into the sunflower. So definitely going to do the same thing as we have been. Get a little black. And add that and then I'll do the same thing as I did up here and dab away after it's dried for a second I 
here I'm just going to guide this black paint into the fingers on this back foot. Of course, there's more I'm going to be able to do once I move on to my next step, which is using ink. Once I'm done with watercolor, I'll use ink to create even more definition, texture, etc. So there's even more I can do. But a long time ago, I realized that it's best if I do each media, each medium, to its maximum as if that was going to be the end. Because when I do that, the piece overall is even more powerful than it is if I sit back and say, well, I don't need to worry about that because I'll be doing ink. I don't need to worry about that because I'll be doing a scraping later or whatever. Skimping. <laughs> Skimping on certain areas. Find it's best not to do so. Okay, that one needs to dry. Couple areas that are still bugging me. The belly here still seems kind of flat. Maybe that's how it would be, but I feel like we'd have a little bit more shadow right here where the wing is hanging over. Just a little bit right there. And then also this beak I'd like to work on too. It's only got a couple shades on it, so it's looking pretty flat too. <clears throat> so for this color, I'm not sure what to do. I'll do to just take a little black, really thin it out. Tiny, 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 tiny touch. Thin it out with water. Maybe I'll put a little dark blue on there too. Just to cool it off to have a cooler shadow color. Although that adds more pigment, of course. So let's get a little black again. better. It's getting there. Okay, now I'm going to use a damp brush to spread this down a bit and then dab away with my towel to soften that edge. There, that's so much better. Of course, we'll see how it dries. Things have not been drying in the way I expect them to. For instance, right here, we've still got that same effect going on, so I'm not gonna bother messing with this anymore, because if I just keep adding and adding, I don't think it's gonna make a difference. It's something about the way these different pigments are combining is cre creating a lighter area, even though I'm adding darker pigment. So, just we'll just leave that. Or at least I'll try some other thing than the paint that I'm using. This now has a roundness to it, which I wanted. So hopefully that will dry, not in this funny way. <laughs> so let's add a little more shading to this beak here. It's a really light color, so I'm gonna wake up this kind of medium color here and show you. I've got these three different mixed brown, browny yellowish. I'm waking this one up. Okay, 
some color added on there. Pull away for reflected light. And then up here, just going to soften this with some water. See how that dries. It's hard to tell. I think that's pretty good though. <clears throat> I might add a little bit more once it's dry to show the separation between the top and the bottom beak. Oh, I'm gonna let that dry first. I'm gonna do a little bit of shading here on this far away griffin. I don't want to do too much, so just a teeny tiny little touch because it's the one that's really far away, so we're, we've got a little bit of a atmospheric perspective effect going on. But I still think we, it would be just a little bit darker right here because the wing is blocking light. Tiny, 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 itty bitty, itty bitty bit. <clears throat> I'll drink my tea and I'll look this over. I'm remembering that yesterday I wanted to add more detail and shading to the closer up. Let's bring this up. The sunflowers that are closer to the viewer. And maybe not even just shading, maybe more, although the color is pretty intense already. But what I'm seeing as this field of sunflowers goes off into the distance is you lose the detail of seeing the different petals, the differentiation between, well, they're not petals, they're called rays. The different rays, it just becomes sort of this yellow circle and you can't tell. You can maybe see a little point here and there. And then these ones that are super close up, they also look darker and I think it's because you can see more details. So I'd like to work on the sunflowers a little bit more just to help create some depth because right now they're all looking the same. Maybe even so I'm looking at this, and then I'm looking over here, and not on my screen, but on in, in real life over here. To my left, I have my sunflowers reference. The ones that are super far away, like here I have differentiation between this middle part, this next little row of flowers, and then there's a darker ring, and then another row of flowers. You can't actually see that in the ones that are really far away. It just looks like one big dark circle. You can only see that difference in the ones that are super close. So this sunflower at the top is actually more like what I think I'd like to do. Because it doesn't have, and you can barely see that, <laughs> it doesn't have much differentiation. It's mostly just one big dark circle. And it's about the same size as this one. Maybe it's a tiny bit farther away, but I think I want to soften up these details and same thing here. Just try to make it more general looking. So let's work on that to start. And I might not even need to add more paint. I might just, you can't really see what I'm working on the small camera. Okay, there. <laughs> it's so far away, you still can't really see, but I'm just going to add water and see if I can soften it up without adding more pigment spread the paint around that's already on here. So I put all this effort into making all these details in it, but when I look at the big picture, literally the big picture, it's not conducive to the to creating the scene I want. Yeah, I think this is going to work, but I do want to add a little bit more pigment to the center. So I'm just going to grab some of that straight out of the well dark brown I have apply that to the middle and just let it naturally flow to the outside 
we'll see what that looks like when it dries. So let's do the same thing for this bottom sunflower. Take what's already there and work it to spread it around amongst all of the area. Also tightening up some of these lines around the rays of this sunflower that's in front. Let's do the same thing. Just grab some of the dark brown out of the well. Drop it in the middle. And help it move out to the outside. This one was easier because it's already a complete circle. But this one we have to paint around. So it needs a little bit more help to spread out. pretty good we'll let that dry let that dry see what it looks like now I would like to address this once more let's see what we can do it's it's as if maybe there's some white paint mixed in with this color I've been using I don't know but it's drying in this sort of chalky way so I'm just going to, again, take this dark brown paint straight, not mixed with anything, and see if I can get a nice shadow to stick here. It's a cool effect overall, but once again, it's not the effect that I'm hoping for, so... Let's see if we can get some more dimension on this, Griffin. It's too bad because I really liked it. A little bit of shading on the head, the way it was working out, but that wasn't enough shading overall for the whole Griffin. So that's pretty strong. Oh, what do I do? It's pretty strong. Let's see if I can dab some away. I'm purposefully going to use a little damp spot of towel. Let's see if that helps make it soft without taking too much. Mmm, that's so tough. It's got an interesting dappled effect. It's still, it's, the contrast is too high. What do I do? I'm just gonna work it a little more, see what I can what I can get to happen. Work the edges some. I'm afraid of adding too much water. I'm not afraid, afraid, but <laughs> I don't wanna add too much water because that could be a reason why I'm getting that washed out effect, that chalky washed out look. But adding water helps create a transition between the lighter browns and this super dark brown. Now that's not bad. If it'll dry <laughs> the way it's looking now actually bringing a little bit into this reflected light area that I created because now the contrast is a little too high. Reflected light shouldn't be brighter normally than the main source of the light. Okay. Let's see how that dries. Hopefully it will not dry weird and chalky. Because I think overall it's a nice looking um, 
transition now from this really light part to this darker part. So let's see how that goes. Okay. We can work on sunflowers. There's so many things I could work on. We could work on the rays, the discs, or the greenery, because the greenery is also super flat. So maybe I'll work on the greenery first, because actually I've done a ton of work on these foreground sunflowers already. Maybe adding a little more dimension to the greenery will help them fit in so that, that that work can be more appreciated. And then maybe I don't need to do more work. So, mm, what color green? I think I'm going to have to mix a darker green. I mean, I could just use, I've got one, two, three greens to choose from. Here, I can show them to you. I'm not going to actually set it down though because my painting is drying. So I've got Oh, you can't see very well because the camera's low, but I can't lift it because I'm holding, my hands are holding stuff. Okay, <laughs> I have this super light green. This one is like a bluish green, as it looks really blue in the camera for some reason. And this is like a dark forest slash hunter green. Could just take the hunter green. So I've already got so many colors. I think I will. Let's just see what that does. So I'm getting my one inch wash brush and waking up this darkest green. I'll hold it so you can actually see what I'm doing. Also, it's easier for me instead of leaning over to my side. I just want to make sure to hold it in, in case I splash any. It doesn't splash on the... Oh, you can't really see. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to lift this up. There. Uh -huh. Okay, now I've got to hold it so that it doesn't... If it does splash, it doesn't splash on my painting. So what I'm doing is... I always call it waking up the color. You add some water and then you just brush and brush and brush that solid pigment so that it releases layer by layer into the water and then becomes as vibrant as you'd like it to be. And this is one of the main reasons watercolor is my fave painting medium because it's so economical and minimally wasteful. So you just wake up, wake up all the colors, even these mixed ones in the middle. That's why I'm always using colors from previous paintings millions of years ago. <laughs> just wake it up with water. Let's use it on this new painting. Why not? Watercolor is also one of the least toxic painting media, especially if you get non-toxic paints. You can get toxic watercolor paints, as I mentioned yesterday, the traditionally, and they're still made this way, made with heavy metals. But, for instance, even if you get non-toxic oil paints, you've still got to deal with the oil part of it, and that's um, not necessarily good for you. Also, the oil part of it is dangerous. It literally can just self-combust. Just, I've told this story before, but in my oil painting class, we had a special can, like a fire-resistant metal can, and it, this you could not throw your used paper towels anywhere but this can because they can just literally combust from the weight of those paper towels and you're thinking paper towel that weighs nothing but you know have several classes in a day a trash can gets full of oily paper towels and it could just light up so 
We also had a special sink because we weren't allowed to rinse the turpentine and the oils and stuff down the normal sink because that's toxic and that would just go back into the waterways and into the our um it's not necessarily going to be cleaned up by the water purification system you know all this stuff so that's why i really like non-toxic watercolors just better all around for so many reasons okay all done with that i've got my nice green all mixed up probably didn't need as much as i got ready but mm. <laughs> okay now i'm going to zoom in and my reference image up on my secondary monitor here so i can just see what do some of these leaves look like so when you're looking at the back of a leaf you see a lot of veins if you're looking at the front do you see as many veins it's kind of hard to see yeah you don't see as many veins you see bumps where the veins go down and then the leaf grows up but okay I'll keep that in mind as I paint so we actually have just this little bit of green right here let's start there I feel like this is already gonna be too much because these are so small these little sections so I just want a teeny tiny touch of paint don't want too much don't want it to go outside of the bounds and get onto the rays next door. there. Ooh, that's really nice. Getting these darker colors on is so nice. After looking at really flat, flat painting for so long. The stalks are the easiest thing to paint because they're just basically a cylinder. Let's keep moving down. This stalk is also broken up by this sunflower in the front. Just as the sunflower to the right that I just finished painting was. Still getting a bit of that chalky dry, uh, drying on this griffin, but Overall, it's a bit better. We've got little spots of dark paint. I think I'm just gonna leave it. That's just how it's gonna be. There's a point at which you just have to say it's good enough. That's good enough. Plus, I could add a little hatching with ink, and I have done in previous paintings in this series, so if there's definitely precedence for it in the series, and also I can do whatever I want because <laughs> this is art, so there's not really any rules. All right. 
right, so I need to keep in mind this atmospheric perspective that I'm going for. Let's see what it looks like in the reference. Yeah, it even the atmospheric perspective is in effect in my reference image as we look way farther into the distance, the green looks lighter and lighter and lighter. So what I'm getting at is I'm not going to add very much of this darker green back here to these. I'm going to add a little bit because I think that they could do with some more dimension, but I'm going to try my best to have a light hand. That's good. I'll do the same thing over here. Super, super light. So we do still want it to stand out from the background as well. It's like a balancing act. Balancing between foreground, midground, background. I think that's good. I probably won't paint any more on those leaves back there. But we haven't done anything on these ones or these ones, so let's add a little bit more dark green there. Let's see if I can find a leaf in my reference image that's similar to the angle I've got here and just see what's happening. Oh, here's one. Oh yeah, actually catching the light quite a bit. There's not that much, that much dark on it because the way it's angled this way and the sun's coming from here. But we can add little touches here and there especially to create the texture so the leaves are not perfectly flat they've got this sort of not bumpy but wavy almost texture I don't know exactly how to describe it but I'm gonna get some of that in here how that's going but I want to soften it a little bit so we'll add some water not all over just here and there I like how like how it's looking with some hard edges and some softened edges and I'm also Keeping in mind, as I look at the whole image, is this bringing too much attention to itself? 
because this is definitely not the main character. This is just a supporting character in this scene. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I really like that, actually. Let me bring the camera down. This is as low as the camera goes. And let you see how neat that texture the way it's drying it's shining so much from the, the page is still really wet but you can see what I meant about we've got some hard edges and then other much softer edges I'll lift this back up just a tiny bit let's see I think the camera is a little angled funny. Push it back. It's so delicate, just the tiniest little touch will <laughs> move this camera. Okay, there we go. I'll move this small one so you can see what I'm working on better in the small camera. Okay. I think I'm alright to work on this leaf. I was just looking at where did I paint? Is there going to be any wet areas touching? The only area is like right here, this little teeny tiny millimeter right here. So I think it'll be fine. So I do want to look for a similar angled leaf in my reference. This one's pretty close. I'll zoom in on it. Now, all the way up to 100%. Okay. So, yeah, actually, the darkest part of this leaf is at the top where you can't really see here. So, we'll add some green to that top area and then have a nice gradient into this lighter color that's already on the page. Of course this seam down the middle. It's uh, the midrib. The midrib of the leaf should be darker too. Okay, got the color on. Let's just add some water guide it down. Now I rinsed my brush and dried it off pretty well because now I'm trying to continue the gradient but also make it more and more gradual. I don't want it to go all the way down and cover up the lightest color. That's pretty good. Feels like we need a little bit over here but hardly anything, so I'm just going to barely touch it. Just a little teeny tiny bit of paint. Also because I don't want to really mess with this nice dark line I added for the midrib. I do want to add a little touch of shadow along this edge to help give dimension to the leaf and show that it's not paper thin. It's got, it's, I mean, even paper is three dimensional, but <laughs> leaves are thicker than paper, generally. Like, they're thicker than like printer paper. Now I did the same thing on this side, but I think I overdid it, so I'm going to take my towel and try to dab some away, but it's already it's already dry because it's so thin of a line. Let's just try. Okay, I used the wet part of my towel and it seemed to help. Let's pull a little bit of that pigment off. A little bit of water, a little bit of water. 
It's right here. Smooth this there. Let's call that good for now. I think I might want to touch a little bit more mid-rib or add more lines like this on there, but I can't really do that while it's still wet. So let's work on these leaves. So this one we're seeing the underside from the side. So I'm scrolling around my reference image. Oh, here's a pretty close one. Isn't exactly the same, but it's pretty close. And actually, when you're seeing it from the side, I mean from underneath, it's pretty bright. The sun shines through it. There's a leaf right next to it. So what I'm looking at is this is the underside of this leaf. In the reference image, there's an, a leaf right next to it but you're seeing the top side and it's much darker. And in fact, this one with the sun shining through has more of a yellow tint. So I'm gonna see about adding a little yellow to it. I'm gonna do a cool yellow. Cause cool yellow is closer to green than to uh, orange on the color wheel. So I'm waking up my cool yellow color. It might not show up because green is already yellow and blue put together, so yellow might not show up, but I might be able to get a little hint of it in there. I'm not sure if the little camera is... yep, yeah, it's looking. Okay, so where I'm seeing it is from the stem. Oh, it does sit, sit on top. Nice. I mean, it might absorb in as it dries. I'm going to see it along the stem, along the mid-rib. Nice. I'm so glad it's sitting on top. And then through these veins here as they come up. Sweet. And then along the edge. The light's catching the edge, too. Cool. I'm so glad. I didn't know if the yellow would show up. It did. Cool. So the same thing is happening with this one. Because actually, I must have used this as reference. I didn't draw the leaf exactly as it is, but for the general shape and angle. So this leaf is having the same thing happen to it. So let's get more of that cool yellow. Neat. Neat. Ah, oh, that's so nice. It looks so nice. Okay. So, I, I'm not going to put anything in here. I've got these couple of little green shapes that are this leaf showing through. But if I add even more detail in there, it's just going to become convoluted. So, we're just going to leave that. Actually, on this particular sunflower, I'm seeing this. I actually have make sunflower stems fuzzy. So I'm going to do some scraping to get that effect. But I'm also seeing a bit of a yellow tint here, probably because the sun is hitting it. So yeah, a little bit on the main stem, too. Cool. Okay, this is dry. Okay. Want to add a little bit more to this leaf here. Line. 
for the mid rib, and then these veins coming out. And this leaf, I think I can do some more too. trying to remember to angle my lines to help show that this this leaf here is curving it's not just flat and so even though this light, this uh, leaf seems to be catching the most light at the bottom. I'm actually going to make a decision based not on my reference, but what I'm seeing here in the illustration. I'd like to create a little bit more separation between the leaf that's closer to the viewer and the leaf that's farther away. So I'm going to add more shadow, or more of that dark green color, even though that's not what I'm seeing in the reference image. I always talk about this, but one of the biggest revelations I ever had was when one of my drawing professors told me there's a point at which you need to stop looking at the reference and start working on the drawing. Which was crazy, because it was one of those technical drawing classes where all they want you to do is draw a pile of boxes for three hours. <laughs> I think that's why that was such a revelatory statement to me because it was that kind of class that I received it in that the professor said, you know what, that that's good enough. You've you've now got to finish the drawing. Because I would just keep working and working and working from the reference image like, I don't know what else more I can do. And then getting so tired and stuff. And just, that was such a... That was such a amazing moment, like, what? I, I don't have to work from the reference 100% of the time and try to make it as photorealistic as possible and all this other stuff. Of course, I think that that kind of advice should not be given too early because many people in my classes were also very bored with those kinds of activities and they would say their drawing was done and I was like okay <laughs> I think that you could work on it more <laughs> but whatever I think that's what the difference is between doing art as a hobby and doing art as a job If you, and there's nothing wrong with either one, but if you want to do it as a job, which if you're taking art classes to get an art degree, I think you probably want to do art as a job. <laughs> You've got to work a little bit harder. You've got to actually work. You've got to actually work on it. But that attitude of easy A is still pervasive or it was when I all these different years that I worked on my degree because it took me a long time to finally get my they call it a four-year degree right no <laughs> no way it took me way longer than that and so through all of those many years until I finally got my degree many many people had the attitude of an art class should be easy. It should be an easy A. It's going to be an easy A. 
this is going to be my fun class this semester or whatever. And I, I don't really appreciate that that kind of attitude because I think it I think it creates a negative experience for everyone in the class, especially for the people who actually want to get something out of the class other than an easy A. Uh, oh well. It just makes it so you got to work a little bit harder if you want to get a lot out of the class because you've got to ignore that pervasive atmosphere of meh. It's easier to work hard when the other people around you are also working hard. When this is dry, I think I'm going to take my brush just wet and try to smooth the paint because I've got these hard edges all along it from multiple layers. I'd like to make it nice, smooth, round looking. But I can't do that yet because with this dark, dark green, if I do it now, the dark green will just take over everything. As I move down these stems, I'm making it darker with less indication of any highlight or no indication like right here, because as you go farther down, less light is able to reach. So more light's able to reach up here, so that's a little, lots of highlights but down here, much darker because there's so many things up top blocking the light. A little extra pigment in this spot right here. There. I'm actually going to turn it upside down because I want to work on this, but there's still like a lot of wet stuff over here, so this way my hand won't accidentally sit in any wet paint. It's break time. My back was starting to complain a little bit just this second, and so I was like, I wonder when it's break time. And it's literally break time right now. I'll just finish this, and then we'll take another break. Yay! pretty dark might be a little too dark of course it will dry lighter but even then let's see if I can pick a little okay I picked a little paint up let's rinse this brush out real good yep, yep. Okay. all right I'll leave this here for now it's time to take another break. Time to stretch, walk around, rest the eyes, get some water, maybe another snack, we'll see. I hope everybody else will take the opportunity as well. I will be right back in five minutes.
Hello everyone, I'm back. I hope you had a great break. I am ready to continue working on this piece. I feel like if not today, then next week, I should definitely be able to finish watercolor work because I'm so close to done. Um, so let's do that first. The first thing I want to do is what I was saying with this stem in the middle. It's got a lot of hard edges. And I want to soften those up with just a little bit of water. I'm going to try not to do too much water because I don't want it all to blend too much together and just become one color. I just want to soften up the edges and let the colors meld a little bit. So I'm just barely getting a teeny tiny touch of water on my brush and then massaging the color on the page. See how that dries? That's much smoother than it was. So let that be. On this leaf, I added that lovely touch of yellow and it blended in really nicely. I don't think anybody would ever guess that it was in there. So now I want to create a little bit more de definition with some darker green, but I want to keep it really conservative because overall this leaf is meant to be catching a ton of light. The light is shining through it. That's pretty good. Okay. Maybe a little bit extra here. Alright. Let's do a little bit over here. Same kind of thing. And the leaf on the opposite side. Looks pretty good. Yay. <clears throat> so what else? Getting a little bit of light right there that I don't really want. It's the same kind of thing what's happening over here. So I don't know if I can do anything about it, but I'm going to try to gently add a little bit more of this dark green to fill it in. Let's see if that works. Hmm, might be done with the leaves. Except for perhaps some white ink or white gouache at the end for really strong highlights or some scraping. But as far as watercolor goes, I think I'm done with the leaves and the stems, the greenery. Something I was thinking of 
when I was considering the whole scene and how there's more light able to play around up here, but the shadows start to take over as you move lower. I don't have that effect in place in the background. It's all the same color, so I think what I'd like to do next is bring some darker green into the background. I wonder if I should use this same green. It actually looks like I should make it, when I'm looking at my reference image of this field of sunflowers, it's so dark. You can see all kinds of stems, but what you see behind that is just shadow. So it seems like I should actually take this even further than what it's like. I've got this dark green here, and right now it's the darkest thing on the page, other than these black feathers. Darkest thing in the environment, building the scene the stage for these griffins to play in. Background is so dark. But there are way more sunflowers in this scene than I have in my scene, so that's something else to keep in mind. If I'm going to make it that dark, I need some more sunflowers to facilitate that darkness, that level of darkness. So maybe instead of just making it, oh, it's all black in the background, little spots of dark and little spots of darker but not black. The way I have yellow intermingling with green up here and these yellow spots are representing sunflowers so far off in the distance is all you see is their color. Doing the same thing lower. I think that might be the best way to move forward. I'm actually gonna work this way, I think. Hopefully that's dry. I don't wanna get my hands in the part that I just painted. It'll probably be dry by now, but working this way will help me a lot. So let's see, I'm gonna paint here. Just want to make sure my little camera is looking at what I'm working on. Okay, so we'll start right here. This will definitely be the darkest part of the background. It is the lowest that's visible. So I'll just start with these little triangles. There's little triangle shapes here. I'm gonna get them wet. I'm gonna do wet on wet for all of this. Get these small shapes wet. And let's get a little dark green. Pop it in there. Let it naturally flow into the water. But we've got that same dark green color right next to it. So let's add, uh, instead of black, I don't want to use too much black everywhere. I've used a lot of black. Let's try adding this super dark blue and see what that looks like. Ah, oh, I don't know if it's gonna make enough of a difference. I am seeing a difference, but will it be enough? Or will it look too similar to the color next to it still? Hmm. Is looking pretty close. Plus there's blue here. I have to use black after all. Hmm. All right, let's do it. Let's add a little bit of black. Had to try it though. I'm going to try it and see what it looks like, but it needs to be even darker in order for the stem to stand out. I'm 
and it's still really close. Keep adding black, at least right here next to this stem, so that it <laughs> doesn't swallow the stem up entirely. It's okay if it's not as much over here, because these areas are all surrounded by the really light colored sunflower head. That seems pretty good though, the difference between, of course the paint will lighten up a little bit as it dries, so let's just see what that's going to be like. Let's let it dry and work on this little section next to it in the meantime. So like before, I'm going to do wet on wet, so we got to get the page wet with some water. I think that's enough water, so dry my brush off a little bit and then just use the brush to guide the water into the corners. Okay, now I'm going to just use this dark blue and black. Let's see what that's like. Experimenting as we go, which is usually how I work anyway. <laughs> I have some previous experience that I can draw on, but so much of what I do is, let's just see if this works. <laughs> which is pretty fun. It keeps it really fun to keep creating. I know I have a more regimented process than a lot of other people, but there's also elements to how I work that are maybe not spontaneous, but experimental. So I've got this blue on top, and so let's add the black. this black to come all the way over here to match with the segment that's on the other side so that it looks like it's the same area behind the stem. But I'm not going to completely fill this whole area in with only black. So like I said, I want it to be kind of splotchy, showing that here's some more sunflower, or here's some more of this or that, instead of only dark, shadowy space, which wouldn't make sense with how many sunflowers I have in my scene. So now let's go back to that dark green. Let that mix in on this side. Mix it with the black. Also, doing the same thing I've been doing over this entire painting, which is any of these little spots of the watercolor paper that have somehow continued to escape being painted. I'm filling them in. As if there's too much of that. It's fine leaving some of it. It's a really, I think it looks really pretty, but if it's just left willy-nilly without any thought behind what what remains and what gets painted, it makes the painting look unfinished and it can also give the halo effect to all the images or uh, objects in the scene so that they don't seem to be integrating. They seem to somehow magically be separate from one another and so it doesn't look like you're gazing upon a scene as like a, a stuff slapped on top of one another kind of feeling. 
Okay, so we've got black mixed with dark green in here, but we've got this stem here again. There's another stem, so I'm gonna try with this final section here to create an area that is darker than the stem, but not just a whole bunch of black, so. Filling it in with water. And let's add that dark green. And black. Now, rinse the brush, take away a lot of the moisture on it, and then use the just damp brush to get the colors to mingle. We are still sort of losing this little tiny segment of stem in this section, but I think the overall effect is worth it to not to not mess with it. So now I'm just going to bring some of this paint into these corners and to these unpainted little bits of paper like I was saying. So everything's coming together. That took a little bit of the color away though, so now I'm going to add a little bit more green. Okay, so we're just going to keep moving up and trying to create a gradient effect as we move up. So I don't want it to be this dark at the top. That's too much. Up here, I think I will hardly change anything. Now we're sort of in the middle band and so that this is the change from this darkest to moving up to the lightest. So the next lowest area is right here so we'll tackle this next right in the middle. And I'm going to start with blue again. The dark blue. Because we're painting right next to leaves again. So I want it, the color, oh there's a lot more water on there than I expected, I want the color to be different. There's a lot more water on my brush than I expected, that's what I was uh, saying. I didn't have time to explain, I was just like whoops, <laughs> I had to get that off of there. That's a nice thing, if you've got that towel handy something like that happens you can often dab it and it you wouldn't even have known that it was that anything went on the page of course it depends on the paper you're using if you're using cheaper paper that means it's thinner and other aspects of it are just lower quality that's why it's cheaper and that also means that that's harder to do because the paper will just suck it right up. <laughs> so you won't, you won't have a chance. Also the cheaper papers and thinner lightweight papers too, which also often equates to cheaper even if it's higher quality materials. Um, it's really hard to scrub color off too to try to save an area where something happened that you didn't want to. Just because the paper is so thin, it can't handle it.
Let's start with some black. Then we'll add that dark green because we're moving away from these leaves so we can add a little more dark green and it won't compete. application is good. Rinse and dry the brush and then use the brush to just guide the paint into all the nooks and crannies and help the paint mix. The two colors mix with each other. I think that's good. I don't want to touch it too much more, so let's just leave it. Moving up. And this is a much bigger section, and also i got to keep in mind, now we're going to do this much lighter part. We're having a lot more of these yellow spots. So I'll probably put a little bit of black just to continue this bit that's already there. But then the rest will be green and even lighter green at the top. See, I guess since I'm going to zoom this in even closer to the section I'm actually working on. There. And this camera can come closer too. Okay. So this shape here is what we're going to work on. And we're going to do wet on wet as we have been doing. So get the paper wet first. I got everywhere it's hard to tell okay holding the paper so that the light is reflecting in a way that hits my eyes so that I can tell that it's wet now we'll start with a little touch of black here toward the bottom we're gonna let that fizzle out that'll be the last spot in this section I think so now let's add a little dark green this side all around it actually I think bringing it up and then here and let's get a little bit of the dark blue put it over here next to this stem so that there's a little bit of difference in the hue since I use the same dark green color for this background is for the stems. Now let's get a middle green color. I've got this blue green kind of teal. 
it's not really teal. Teal is a little bit more blue, but this is definitely a super bluish green. But this is the middle of the three that I have. So we're going to use this one, just so that it's a different green. And then even get my lightest green, which is like a lime green. And a little bit of that, bring it up in the top. And now, using the brush to guide the colors where I want them, help them mix. And there's so much, whoa, gotta be careful. There's so much moisture on the page. I do not need a wet brush at all. I need it to actually be fairly dry. So I don't want to add more water to this or it'll spill out beyond the boundaries that I'm trying to keep it within. turning my brush because by doing so I can get a more pointy tip because as you brush it starts to bend to one side based on how you're putting the pressure on it so if you turn it you can get a a different brush tip shape thanks to the way that you had been using it before you turned it if that makes any sense. <laughs> I always wonder if I am explaining things in a way that makes sense to others. It doesn't make sense to me, but anyway, that's the best I can do, so <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. There. Yeah! We're getting some nice, interesting combinations. The only thing I wonder is if this is a little bit too much black right here to be a continuation of what's down there, but it's going to dry lighter, so it's probably going to be fine. <clears throat> There's a little section right here. Let's tackle that. There's actually only 20-ish minutes left in my stream. I don't know if I'll be able to finish the whole background. Hopefully I will, but I guess we'll see. So I'm going to just use black here. Maybe a touch of blue, but we've got that dark green right next to it already, so I don't want to lose the stem. Yeah, let's do a little touch of blue. It's so subtle, but it does look a little different. Put that in there. That blue pigment in with the black. There. <clears throat> okay. Man, this is making a huge difference. It's really, really nice. We just got to keep moving up. So there's no more background showing down here until way up here where I didn't really want to change much. I mean, I might do a little, a little something, but it's right around here. I need to continue this transition. And actually, I'm going to flip this over because this section is at this level. I don't know if you're seeing it. There we go. 
So this section needs to kind of match with this one. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm working on in the little camera. <laughs> Continuing with the wet on wet. Oh, there's still some paint in my brush. I thought it just got some water in it, but I forgot to rinse it out in the first place. Well, it's got a little blue on it. That's okay. It's one of the colors I've been using, so. So we'll start with a little black. So there's a stem here, so we're going to have some black next to the stem so that it's more visible than if I used green next to it. And now we can bring some green over here. Even though I'm trying to keep this green away from the stems, I do want to use the same color green. So the whole point is trying to suggest that there's more sunflower greenery back here. It's just not visible because the background is not something that I would hope people would look at first. Maybe they would actively look at it later if they were interested enough in the piece to give it a good long look, but the background should fade into the background. And it's this sort of almost subconscious effect on the viewer. They don't have to think about it. It just does its job and the viewer doesn't have to do any work. That's the kind of thing I'm going for here. I want a little bit more black next to this stem. This isn't as dark as I'd like. And we'll add a little bit more green now. Along the wing, because I don't want this sort of glowing effect that was happening. guide this into this section. Alright, now there's this tiny triangle here. Let's get some water into there. And just put black in it. So it's right next to the stem again. So let's get a bunch of black paint and fill it in. Use a super dry brush. Sometimes what I do is spin my brush tip on the paper towel so that I can get the filaments to come together into a point without using water because I want my brush to be fairly dry right now but sometimes if you just dry your brush off the filaments go shoop and they're all apart so you rub it on the paper towel in a circular motion and they'll come together like this bring a little bit more pigment into this section. It's not dark enough. 
for being right next to the stem. Okay. Whew. So that section is done. We need to be getting lighter and lighter right here. <clears throat> So when I look across, we have that blue-green there. So for these little triangles, let's do the same thing. Then we'll have some consistency across the entire piece. And that'll help with the background feeling like it actually exists behind everything, even though what's actually here is just uh, paint on paper. <laughs> So first things first, put the water in the triangles. I have to be careful with my hand. I'm working in the opposite direction that is helpful for me. I don't want to put my hand in that paint there. So let's get that blue-green color. Need a little bit more water. Stick it in there. Oh, nope, don't have enough pigment on my brush. Okay, now stick it in these triangles. Boop, 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 boop. All right, that's pretty good. Rinse the brush, dry it off good. And then use it to guide the paint. A more relaxed painter might just go ahead and leave this. But I like to be pretty precise with my work, so that's why I go to the extra effort to really guide the paint into the corners and stuff. Like I said, like I always say, there's not, not really any rules in art, necessarily. I mean, other than, you know, don't steal other people's work. <laughs> but, yeah, something like this. You can paint it more roughly, you can paint it more softly. Okay, moving up. So at this point on the painting, we've got that lime green color. But I don't want it to just suddenly be lime green, so I'm also going to add some of the blue green and let that mingle. Make sure you're actually seeing what I'm working on. Where am I working? I'm over here? Okay, yes, now you can see it in the small camera. I mean, okay. I love how the blue green and the lime green mix too. It makes such a pretty color, a beautiful gradient from one color to the other. Yeah, I think overall I am going to need to do the entire thing again, including these yellow spots. Because it just looks so different. I mean, obviously from here to here we need a little bit more of a transition, but... Yeah. So, let's just keep going. Oh, only ten minutes left. Yeah, I might not be able to get this. <laughs> not, not be able to get the background done today. Well, we'll see. So bring in the lime green. Of course we can also just start painting lighter and lighter. The color doesn't have to be so vibrant. 
and that's another way we can help transition from this darker area at the bottom that I'm creating in the background to the lighter area at the top. In fact, it looks pretty good right here to just do that. Maybe that's maybe this is the part where this line right here. This is where I'll let the top be as is. We'll see if that works. Because it looks pretty good right here now, now that I've done this section. So I'm flipping this back over and let's move the camera. I'm going to work on this spot. So it looks like you can see that pretty good in the small camera. Make sure my brush is actually rinsed off. And I think this is dry by now. Yeah, it feels dry. This looks so good though. I'm very happy with this. Definitely worth it to keep working on this background. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way. Something about working on it this way is easier. I think because my hand's motion is this. <laughs> and this shape right here is this. So. So this is still below that cutoff where I was going to try to just mix it with what exists instead of painting over what exists. All right, so right here we still have some pretty dark colors. There's still black there. So let's put a little touch of black coming up right here. But we don't want too much because this is also the part where it's fading into the three different green colors that we're using. So I'll add a little bit of that darkest green. And then let's just go ahead, just that one little touch, and let's go ahead with the blue green. And then some lime green. Now, mixing it together. Guiding the paint. right here. I'm not going to mix this too much right here. I really like how this is looking with a little bit of light left. That color that was underneath. this triangle right here and I like the idea of just putting the lime green in there I'm also just gonna go ahead and paint a little lime green in this section I'm not even gonna do wet on wet I'm just gonna paint it directly in there it's so small there. Boom. Oh, I love how vibrant this is coming, uh, becoming too because of the, because of using three different kinds of green. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This is another instance I'm feeling that uh, 
same feeling from yesterday, but even stronger, of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for this piece. Not as if this piece has been giving me trouble, that it just happens with every piece that it feels like it will never come to fruition, <laughs> that it will never look the way you hope, that all your efforts until this point have been in vain, that it will just always look flat and boring and unfinished. No, it is really, really coming to life. It's always worth it. I'm adding a little more black down here because now that this has dried, this doesn't look dark enough, so. And a little black in here. Spread it around. That'll look all right once it dries. How much time we got? Oh man, how did time? Time is flying and I'm not done. I'm not done yet. Oh no. <laughs> That's okay though. About three minutes. I don't want to tackle anything too big with only three minutes left. Of course I could just call it good here and uh pick it back up next week or work on something else other than the background because uh, there is there's just hardly anything left that needs paint but in order to get that nice smooth gradient that I want I've got to add water way beyond where I'll actually put the paint so that's why even though there's just this little strip left where I want to add more robust color there's a lot more actual physical painting to do. So I could leave that and look for something else. I'm gonna put a little detail here on the beak. Yeah, let's put a little extra touch of paint on this beak here. I'll just look for little stuff like that in these last couple minutes. Maybe should have used my smaller brush for that. I'm thinking about it. Well, it's not too late. Taper off with a tinier brush. Been using that round four the entire time today. A size four round brush. I can't get any paint to come off of this small brush. Okay, hopefully this time. Come on now. There we go. There we go. Tighten up this space around the eye. Make that a little shading top part. Yeah, maybe we'll call it good with that beak, because actually there's only seconds left. I'll rinse out my brush and do a little show and tell of what we accomplished today during this stream. It looks like I'm the only one here right now, so I don't think we'll raid anyone and just call it good today. So here's the progress we've made. And it, even though it still has that chalky look, that texture is pretty cool in that shadow there that I was struggling with on that griffin. Oh, it doesn't want to focus. Thank you, camera. This new camera is really good at 
auto-focusing, but it sometimes still struggles a little bit sometimes. Yeah, adding these colors to the background looks so good, if I do say so myself. I love these little pops of the aqua green. And then we've got nice shadows going on on these griffins here, even in the background griffin there. And we softened up the look of these sunflowers in the back so they don't have as much detail so that the sunflowers in the front feel like they're in the front. And we even worked more on these, this couple here. Man, excellent progress. I really feel like next week we have a great chance of finishing watercolor work on this and moving on to inking. But we are beyond time. So let's call it good there. There's only a couple of us here now, so let's just end the stream and not raid. It feels nice to have a break. Raiding is always a little bit of extra work for me because I don't like to raid and run, so I really enjoy talking to the person that I raid, so uh, let's, let's take a break today, just like yesterday. Okay. Oh, yeah, see you. See you in a second, husband. <laughs> That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with some Chibi Friday work. I hope to see you then, same time as usual. Thank you for watching!